back to another episode. We're back here again with the 99 soft top, getting that hard top slap back kit. The owner of the truck is with us here today. We're gonna go check in with those guys. Uh, it's, he's meeting right now with Josh over the, the CAD program, kind of seeing what is gonna be getting into his truck. So without further ado, let's go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got Steve and Hi. guys. Oh no, Josh. What are you guys looking at? Uh, right now we're looking at the drawing for the B and C tillers. Okay. So, not a whole lot going on yet, but as you can see, we do have the B pillar right here and the C pillar in the back. Uh, basically, we've explained it before, but this program makes the production of these parts a lot easier and a lot smoother and a lot faster. After I get the parts laid out, I move them to another program, kind of like a sister program to this one that allows me to cut the parts on the CNC tube cutter after loading the material. Marks the bends, cuts it out, I take it over the bender and I can knock it out real quick. So I think we have some other content that you filmed last week, week before with Josh. Yeah, let's, of, us bend, of him bending the tubes. Let's yeah. cut to that now, and then we'll get back out and check out the truck. You wanna to talk to Josh about- No, I never building? said I wanna to talk to Josh. You said, do you wanna to talk to Josh? Oh. Well, then get out of here. implying that I need to talk to Josh. Well, then get out of here. I thought you wouldn't be I'd rather talk to Josh than Josh. you. Now, if there was an option between the two of you, it'd be Josh. I'll take it. Bye now. Bye. All right, so what are we doing, Josh, now that I kicked Ryan out of here? All right, now that Ryan's gone, uh, we're going to have a little peace and quiet and get some filming done. Uh, I'm working on a test piece for the B pillar of the hardtop conversion truck. Now the reason I'm doing a test piece is because this material, the HREW, is a lot cheaper than the DOM material. So in doing this, I can bend this up, make sure all the dimensions are correct, make sure all the bends are in the correct spot, and make sure it fits great, and then go ahead and bend the DOM. Because if I bend the DOM first and something's wrong and I have to recut it, then that's, uh, Ryan's not gonna be too happy with me. So with that being said, let's go ahead and bend it. So now that we're back here at the truck, we can go ahead and take a look at the C-pillar. Uh, this is just a mock-up pillar, the test piece. Uh, I do have the final version, but we don't have that in the truck currently. But as you can see, it's fitting really nice so far. Why is it bent like that? There's two big reasons that I did put the bend in here and brought this, the end of the tube, further into the inside of the truck. The first being, we still need to be able to remove the roof and the bolt points are down here in the corner. Uh, so if I brought it straight down, that blocked those. And the second, probably a bigger reason, is for the, uh, the seat belt. So I, I hope you guys can see this, but the seat belt will actually be able to recess inside of this tube and sit almost flush in the front, so it'll have a really clean final install, and it'll maintain an almost factory look as well. Is there gonna be a flat bar of steel right there too? Yes, like you guys have seen in uh, the one of the previous vlogs with the angled piece that sits over the fender, that will extend forward, and that's where this C-pillar will be welded along with a gusset for the seat belt. All right, so now that we're done talking about the seat pillar, that's really all there is to it. We'll go ahead and move a little bit further forward and start talking about the crossbars that will connect the B and C pillars together. So the way the crossbar will sit, it'll sit nice and tight up against the center line of this, uh, the roll in the roof, uh, which will give you a little bit more headroom, keep it a little higher, and it'll be a little stronger as to where it lands in this bend. But with the handles, I'll be able to angle those once the piece is in. So now that we're here, we can talk about the B-pillar a little bit. Uh, as you can see, it's fitting in the truck nicely so far. Again, this one is just the test piece. We don't have the final piece in the truck yet. But along the roof line, it's fitting really well. We've got a 3 8 inch spacers up here. We're going to go ahead and keep the B and C pillars and the, uh, the connecting pieces. Spaced away a little bit so we can allow for sound deadener, a headliner, and a potential leather wrap if you ever decide to go that direction. Uh, but as you can see, it does fit right back into the factory locations down here. It'll maintain the same bolts, the same uh, door catch for the front two doors, or yeah, the front two doors, and it'll also maintain the same seat belt locations as well. Again, trying to stay as close to factory as we can when it comes to the seat belts, just to stay with 
the safety in regards to that. So we've talked a lot about doing the test pieces before bending the final pieces. I just want to give a little bit of an explanation as to why we do it and the differences in the materials because we've mentioned the welded material and the DOM material quite a few times throughout a lot of these vlogs. Uh, so right here we've got some of the welded tube. Uh, yes, it's not the same size, but you still get the idea. Uh, as you can see, if you want to bring it in here a little closer, Jason, we've got this blue seam right here, all the way down the entire tube. Now, through the manufacturing process, it's one piece that's rolled and then welded right there, which in a roll cage or uh, roll pillars or anything like this that we've got, uh, that can actually be a massive failure point. Any amounts of pressure on this tube can cause the tube to split, making it very weak. So the upside to DOM is you do not have that seam anywhere on here. It's all one solid piece. You don't get that failure point like you would with the welded tube. So that is why, like you had seen on the exoskeleton truck and you're seeing here, we're using DOM as opposed to the welded because it is significantly stronger and our biggest thing here, safety first. So I just want to give you guys a quick little explanation on that and show you the differences. Alright guys, this episode is a wrap. Always happy to get Josh in the camera, sharing his knowledge and expertise. That young man is talented. Very stoked to have him here, proud of what he can do. He will be checking in with us on a couple more episodes, maybe one or two, before we get this thing wrapped up. So definitely hit that subscription and notification so you get those. The next episode coming is a doozy. It is a unique six person seater. Um, adventure vehicle for this family definitely stay tuned hit that bell so you don't miss that episode it's gonna be a good one a doozy a doozy <laughs> yeah, <whatever. laughs> no that is cool so the machine did that yep it's, it's a big track system i'm surprised there. you don't have the hydraulic bender you got a hand bender huh no we have an uh, electric bender oh okay yeah. those things are expensive yeah the other one was better but are you shooting you sound like you should take <laughs> Keep in touch with me, I guess. I don't know. That doesn't make any sense either. <laughs> Talented young man. He's got big places to go. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> what the fuck? Wait, what are you about to do, Josh? I'm going to bend stuff. Bend stuff? Bend stuff, yes. Is that what you do? You just bend stuff all day? Sometimes. Sometimes? Yeah, sometimes. Is that I... what you pay him to do is music. bend stuff? Oh, music. Music? music. music. Sing for me. You, so you could sing over that music and then... And then it won't be monetized. Yeah. Happy birthday to Oh my god. Josh. I wish Back it was to my Josh. birthday. That'd be nice. <laughs> Are you filming now? Yeah. <laughs>